Hello, this is Matt from TracyandMatt.co.uk and here I am with another white box product from HTC and these white boxes from HTC are always pretty interesting and inside, this time, we have the HTC Sensation XE obviously this is a demo model, hence the white box um, pre-retail, so um, contents may change but I think pretty much it's the same so take a quick look at the handset and we'll come back to that in one second also in the box we have a USB to micro USB sync charge cable, standard piece of kit that. Then we have the charger, again uh, pretty standard for HTC, they've been supplying the chargers like this for a long time, so you've got like a two part thing there with a USB connector on the top. I have a nice uh, selection of different rubber earbuds to go with the headphones, which we're going to have a look at now. So these um, the Sensation XE uh, comes with the Beats Audio, which is obviously the new tie-up that HTC have. And so we've got the Beats Audio headphones or headset. So four pole, three and a half mil jack on one end. Then there is a, a funky um, inline microphone with um, some push buttons. We'll just take that off so we can see them. So uh, inline microphone, microphone holder on the back, and the buttons on this side. So you've got play and pause, um, and the middle button actually also does answer incoming telephone calls, and then the skip tracks backwards and forwards on the other side as well. Um, looks very familiar because basically it's the same sort of thing that you get with um, other HTC um, handsets in terms of the, the actual wired headset. But they've just you know increased uh, up the design a little bit on that with this chrome around the buttons and uh, obviously the red inlay to go with the red cable. And then you have the Beats Audio headphones on the other end, um, so they've got pretty large magnets, um, proper in-ear with uh, you know noise isolation, and um, they look quite cool, I mean they've got good reviews, so we're going to have a play with those headphones themselves as well, and so it's be a you know, nice change to have some decent headphones that you don't you know, immediately want to go out and replace. Then you have a little bag, uh, again that's just kind of for the, your accessories, your headphones and everything else, so uh, that's you know, one of these sort of uh, bags that you can just put your headphones in to keep them neat and tidy also helps to stop getting them tangled unlike some of the others that you can get certainly with the Beats Audio it is a round cable rather than the flat cable so it is a little bit more susceptible to tangling but uh, nevertheless that's, uh, that's, that's okay there so let's just take a look at the handset so first of all on the front uh, we've got a forward facing camera then where we've got the speaker um, on the front there as well you can see that there's this uh, interesting sort of red uh, inlay to it or red uh, grill just makes it a little bit more uh, unusual uh, on the front there as well you have a 4.3 inch display uh, and it's QHD so that's uh, 540 by 960 pixels uh, we first saw this obviously on the Sensation and the Sensation brand is one that's uh, getting a lot of treatment and uh, you know, I guess you call it an iterative um, steps a bit like the Desire was um, so it's, say last year with the Desire the HD and Z and so on um, and the, you know the sensations getting a similar treatment. So uh, this is, uh, as I say, QHD display, great for films, and it's a proper um, widescreen uh, when it's in that range, but proper not widescreen um, ratio as well. Capacitive touch buttons underneath. Uh, home search back. Uh, sorry, home menu back and search. They are capacitive, and also they have that un uh, red um, design that flows through the whole of the handset basically. On the left you have an up and down volume control and the micro USB sync charge connector. Uh, on the bottom, nothing really to see, we've got uh, just there we've got the microphone hole there. And on the right hand side absolutely nothing, there's no dedicated camera button or anything like that. Top we have power button and the 3.5mm headphone connector so that we can use the wide headset that, headset that comes with it, the Beats Audio headset that comes with it or indeed you know, any other standard headphones which is kind of cool. On the back, 8 megapixel autofocus camera with dual LED flash. There are another couple of holes around the back as well that you'll see. Um, I think they are secondary microphones as well that help noise cancellation. And then we have the loudspeaker. And on the bottom, you've got the Beats Audio and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, design-wise, you've got this sort of split back, um, which is again a theme that's coming through the HTC handsets at the moment. It just makes it a bit more interesting. So it's an all-metal design. Um, around here and around all this part here um, but the actual back has got this sort of two-tone display or two-tone uh, splits so we're going to take the back cover off which uh, 
be honest, it's a little easier said than done. There we go. I'll pop the back cover off. So you'll see the back cover, put that down, uh, is really the whole of the back all the way up to the screen as it actually just wraps around slightly. And inside the back, that's just powering up, inside the back you have a couple of little connectors, as you can see there. And that, they are for the antennas. So you've got a Wi Fi and um, like a telephone antenna actually within the back. Uh, it means that they can make, they can basically externalize the antenna and just improve the actual uh, you know, reception and signal uh, strength there. Uh, just pop the battery out and we can take a look at the capacity. 1730 milliamp hour battery, which is a pretty high capacity battery and it's fairly large and weighty. Then the handset, we got uh, in the back, we've got the sim space for the SIM card and then space for the uh, micro SD or SDHC memory card. Comes with a 2 gig, again this is pre-release um, so in terms of when it actually goes retail it might have a larger one. I think 8 gigs sort of seems to be a bit more typical these days but it uh, will support up to 32 in the back there anyway so let's just pop the battery back in and we'll attempt to get the back cover back on. As you can see the back cover as I say, does come around the whole of the outside, so it actually just sort of slides on at the top and into the slot, and then snaps in. So let's just power up, because obviously I'll pop the battery back out. And there we go. While it starts up, let me run down the specification. We have a quad band for GSM and tri band for HSDPA, so roaming is not going to be a problem. Size 126 millimeters from top to bottom. Uh, just over 65 millimeters wide and 11.3 millimeters thick. Um, because of the 4.3 inch display, obviously the handset's going to be a bit larger and also it's a bit weightier. It's 151 grams. I guess part of that is because of the metal metal um, construction, but also it has a large display and a large battery. The display is super LCD, um, capacitive, multi touch, touch screen. Um, we've got an accelerometer for uh, when you actually turn the handset and uh, it will actually rotate the display. And uh, for you know, apps and games and that kind of stuff that use G sensors and that sort of stuff, a gyro sensor. In terms of the processor, it's a 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor it's an, uh, with an Adreno um, C, uh, GPU. Uh, one of the fastest uh, on the market really at the moment, 1.5 gigahertz dual core. So we'll benchmark that in a moment as well. We've got Android OS 2.3.4 Gingerbread. That forward facing camera is listed as being VGA. Um, get confirmation of that when we actually do the review because it might actually be a 1.3 or something like that but uh, uh, the specification I have here lists it as being uh, forward facing VGA. Got Bluetooth 3.0 with A2DP support, Wi-Fi supporting 802.11 BG and uh, N standards. Uh, we've got HTC Sense user interface which you can take a look at in just a moment. As I say 8 megapixel autofocus camera on the back that does support um, HD video recording um, certainly 720 but possibly even uh, I would suspect no, indeed, 1080p as well um, at 30 frames a second. So uh, one of the few handsets to actually support 1080p video recording with the uh, built-in camera. So that's pretty cool. Um, in terms of memory, we've got 4 gig of internal ROM. However, only 1 gig is available to the user so for storage. Um, the rest of it is taken up by the uh, operating system, user interface, and all that kind of stuff. And finally, 768 meg of RAM. That's a fairly typical amount as well for the uh, you know, higher end HTC handsets too. So without further ado, I guess that's kind of talked about most of the bits and pieces we've got here. We'll take a look at the user interface. So familiar as it is, we have the unlock ring, which is common among the new HTC handsets. Um, we'll just go through the setup. So we're going to skip installing the SIM card and transferring our stuff. We'll just accept most of these as being the default so we can kind of skip through. I'm going to connect to a wireless network here. Typically, you could do it through here or you can do it later on, but I'm going to do it right now. So connect to a wireless network. As you can see, you've got your on screen QWERTY keyboard. Through the setup, you don't have the accelerometer control to use the landscape keyboard. You can only use portrait. That's no big deal, but we'll look at that in a moment as well. Okay, so we're connecting and obtaining an IP address, and we are indeed connected. We won't disable the location services, we'll enable all of those for the GPS and we'll accept passing our location and 
we'll just temporarily, well for now we're going to just decline to actually give feedback. So here we can actually do uh, set up various accounts um, through the sort of uh, first installation and setup wizard. Um, so you can set up your Google account, your Exchange, Active Sync for email, um, standard mail accounts, POP3 IMAP and all that kind of stuff. Connect to your HTC Watch video service account. Uh, connect to Facebook, Flickr, Twitter, and so on. Um, I'm going to skip that for now, and I'll just finish on using the defaults for date and time, which I think it actually has. There we go. Picked up the current time. That's pretty cool. So we load up the user interface. We've seen this before. This is uh, HTC Sense 3.0, and we've seen this on other HTC Sensation um, handsets, and indeed a fair few others that are available on the market at the moment. So if you've seen an HTC device before, you'll be familiar with the interface. You've got the clock at the top, which obviously is a flip-style um, sort of roller-type clock. Um, location and weather will come up there, which actually picks up a GPS uh, fix when I actually set that up. Uh, we've got the music, market, messages, mail, internet and camera. Now, we've got seven panels of uh, stuff here. So we've got Google search with voice search and favourites, which is uh, like a speed dial for your favourite people. Uh, we then have music, which we don't have any uh, pre-installed on the handset, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, again, once it comes to retail, there might be a couple of sample tracks on there. Um, one would hope that, you know, the fact that it's the, the Beats Audio um, brand uh, coupled up with the handset, that uh, there would be at least a couple of uh, uh, sample tracks on there for us to play with, but anyway, not on our demo unit. This is a blank page, but basically tells us what to do with the blank page, so we can uh, play around with the settings, so a long press on the home screen will actually give us the ability to add widgets or change wallpaper, lock screen, and all that kind of stuff. Just come back out of there, and then we roll all the way back to the beginning, so this is kind of like page one, if you like. Uh, so you've got weather information would be here. You've got the HTC Watch information. So this would be uh, list your library and you can actually go into the videos that you have here. You can go into the watch store, purchase or rent uh, videos for, for playback on the handset. Then you've got friend stream, which would have uh, your Twitter, Flickr and uh, Facebook feeds here. If we actually sign into those accounts. And then we're back to the home screen uh, or the middle screen. Uh, as, we can, as you can see, we can flick all the way around and uh, it has, actually does roll with momentum so if you flick it it kind of just spins and there was also this 3D effect that uh, have been, has been added into HTC, HTC Sense 3.0 so there's kind of just like a layering to the stuff that's on the screen just makes it a little bit more interesting it doesn't really perform any function, it's just kind of pretty um, if we pinch on the home screen we can go into the HTC, uh, well they call it Leap but it's basically an overview of everything that's running on the widget on the pages of the home screen, all the widgets there that are shown. Um, so if we uh, lose track of where our widgets are, we could say, well, actually, I want to go and look at my HTC Watch widget, and it bring that page up. Likewise, if we push the home button twice, or home button from the middle home screen, it will actually give us the overview as well. The animation, again, has just been pimped a little bit, um, so it's just a little bit more funky the way the 3D effect works there. Um, but the overview, I guess it's kind of one of those things, it's just fun to play with more than anything else. I personally don't think it's that practical, but uh, there you go. Uh, pushing the button in the middle at the bottom, or to the side of the bottom I should say, we'll have a look at all the applications, so we've got quite a few installed. Um, they look pretty much straightforward and standard, we've got an FM radio there that wasn't mentioned in the specification that I just rattled off, um, we've got an FM stereo radio there, and we've got Gmail, Internet, um, HCC's Peep, which is their Twitter app, lightweight Twitter application, and YouTube, tweet, Tita, which is a little game, Task Manager, Google Talk, um, HTC Stocks, uh, you've got a Wi-Fi hotspot, so you can actually use it to share out the uh, uh, connection over Wi-Fi, um, but mostly it's pretty straightforward stuff, um, you can determine what it does in dock mode and that kind of stuff. What we will do though is take a look at the internet, and rather than going there, we're going to go to our site. There we go, so let's do a quick load there. Um, the QHD display, uh, well it's the same as on the Sensation, but it's a really good display. It does mean that um, you know, web browsing is really good. Uh, one of the best handsets for web browsing, I would say, even with the small text, 
you've got plenty of uh, plenty of pixels on the screen enable us to actually read and uh, you know get a good experience from the web browser uh, obviously in the portrait orientation even then you can see kind of like the structure of the site quite nicely obviously if we can go into landscape mode it just means that text is going to be that bit more legible 960 pixels wide to play with like that uh, means that it lays it out quite nicely uh, double tapping does zoom in and zoom out and obviously you've got the multi-touch for zoom as well so that's pretty cool go back there so that's the browser it's again it's a straightforward implementation of a uh, browser almost every um, Android well most Android handsets will have this version of it um, but it works rather well the SLCD display is being shown off here reasonably well because of the blues and greens and the orange at the top I get, although I guess that's not really going to come across in the uh, video that you're looking at here obviously because of the limitation of the camera um, but uh, the SLCD display does work quite nicely coming back out of there let's go to YouTube take a quick look and we'll do a quick search for my channel which is uh, channel name Leo D and we've got quite a few on here at the moment so let's take a look well let's pick the HTC wildfire just for fun it's one of our more popular videos well and that uh, started started playing quite quickly uh, buffering and playing re well very fast actually there we go and if we put it into the landscape mode it does full screen portrait mode swings back so again it's a standard implementation of the YouTube client on Android but it works really really well it's picked up that I am picked up my location well broadly um, and the weather has already started to update there uh, so it's pretty cool and I suppose if we come back over here there we go it's actually do, here's picking up the weather for the weather widget popping into Android market which will require a sign-in Let's just sign into my Google account, and if I actually want to do it, landscape, I can do so now with a full uh, large keyboard because obviously a large display means that even people with large thumbs like myself will actually find that fairly comfortable to type type on. So let's go and sign in. There we go. So that's signed in. I'll just finished setting that up. We'll take a look at Android Market. Accept. There we go. So, uh, a standard implementation of Android Market once again. You've got your apps there all listed under category. Uh, you've got games again listed by genre. Um, and then on one side, you've got the HTC recommendations. So, all the apps that HTC recommend are there as well. And then the search at the side. So, I'm going to search for Quadrant. which is a benchmarking tool that we use and just use the standard free edition and go ahead and install that and at the top we'll get a notification that stuff's uh, downloading so Quadrant is downloading and installing as you can see there it's telling me about some updates that it's found it's successfully automatically updated Gmail and um, some other updates available let's go and take a look at what that's telling me about so there's a few here that are updates to applications that are installed. Now we'll go ahead and do that later. Looking at the things that have just installed, let's look for Quadrant. There we go. So Quadrant benchmarking. We'll quickly run that. I'm only going to run it once, but when we do full reviews, we will actually run it multiple times to take an average because the amount that um, it varies when you run the benchmark is quite considerable at times, depending on the handset. So generally, we run it around sort of uh, 10 times and take an average. Uh, we're getting on around 20, 19, 20 frames a second there. This is pretty fast at uh, between 30 and 40 frames a second on the 3D test. So that's pretty quick. Sixty frames a second on this 3D planet and moon scene. And 34 frames a second on DNA string. So we're nearly at the end. We are. Set the care benchmark. Wow. There we go. 2,427 is our benchmark score, and you can see how that compares to the Nexus One with uh, Android 3.2 Plus on there. Um, 
possibly, I think, the best benchmark results I've ever seen. Um, I'd say almost twice some of the other handsets that we've reviewed, reviewed lately. Uh, but then again, we would come to expect that from a 1.5 gigahertz processor. Um, I'd be disappointed if we didn't see a massive uh, jump in results there anyway. But it is just a benchmark. Um, actual real world might uh, appear to be a bit different as well, but uh, it just gives us an indication. We'll uh, run it a few more times before we do the review anyway. Pull down at the top, because uh, we've already seen a few things that will come up in here, notifications, but also recently used apps are here as well, so I've obviously run these four already on the device. Then we also have quick settings to turn Wi-Fi on and off, hotspot on and off, mobile network on and off, and uh, Bluetooth, GPS, and so on. Coming back out of there, let's just take a look at... Um, where are we? I'll just come past it. Google Maps. Purely to see if we've picked up a GPS fix, which I'm pretty sure we must have, because we've updated weather to a reasonably close location. Take a little while to load. There we go. Location accurate within 30 meters. That's pretty cool. You see that it's uh, polling right at the top. And yep. Again, again, a standard implementation of Google Maps allows us to twist and turn using multi-touch and zoom in and out. That's pretty cool. Fine, let's take a quick look at the camera. I don't have anything particularly exciting to take a picture of. But uh, we'll use the headphones anyway just to demonstrate the camera. And the camera controls, again, pretty straightforward. And if you've seen HTC handsets before, the interface is the same. You've got a zoom control on the side, which is just a digital zoom, not optical. Have controls down the side for different modes. So you can use uh, different effects there with the pitch taking. Just leave it standard. And you've got different flash modes, so you can forward flash automatic, off, uh, forced on, and so on. So we just leave it on auto. Uh, you can switch between the cameras, forward reverse facing cameras and switch between video and still recording modes. So if we tap on the display it will set the focus and then we can take a quick picture. Picture taking was pretty fast and then up in the corner you can actually go into your library. Picture isn't bad, even the text is reasonably legible even that distance it's not bad at all but obviously when we come to do the full review we'll take a hell of a lot more photos both indoors outdoors using the flash and all those kinds of things low light conditions etc anyway that's a reasonably quick look at the HTC Sensation XE with the Beats Audio I will have a full review for you coming up over the next couple of weeks and also we're going to have the Sensation XL coming up as well which is uh, the big daddy of the Sensation range at the moment uh, so that review will be up in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash tracyandmatt or facebook.com slash tracyandmatt.co.uk. Please come over, um, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook and please get in, you know, get in touch with us, interact with us. Tell us what you want to find out about this handset, any other handset and stuff that we're doing right, stuff that we're doing wrong. It'd be good to hear from you. Uh, I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmatt.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching.